O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on your side. Bear patiently. Cross of grief or pain, leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, He faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways, leads to a joy. Still my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your robe, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysteries shall be bright at last. Be still my soul. Shall be 
Lord's purest charge restore. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed, we shall meet. Our Old Testament reading tonight comes from the book of Genesis. It's uh, another chapter in the story of Abraham and Sarah and their descendants. We're reading verses 1 through 29 of the 27th chapter. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called his elder son Esau and said to him, My son, and he answered, Here I am. He said, See, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver, and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. Then prepare for me savory food, such as I like, and bring it to me to eat, so that I may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game <clears throat> and bring it, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father say <clears throat> to your brother Esau, bring me game and prepare for me savory food to eat that I may bless you before the Lord before I die. Now, therefore, my son, obey my word as I command you. Go to the flock and get me two choice kids so that I may prepare from them savory food for your father, such as he likes. And you shall take it to your father to eat so that he may bless you before he dies. But Jacob said to his Mother Rebekah, look, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a man of smooth skin. Perhaps my brother will, f my father will feel me, and I shall seem to be mocking him and bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my word and go. Get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and his mother prepared savory food such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the gar best garments of her elder son Jacob, which were with her in the house, and put them on our younger son Jacob. And she put the skins of the kids on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she handed the savory food and the bread that she had prepared to her son Jacob. So he went into his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me, now sit up and eat of my game, so that you may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, Because the Lord your God granted me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come near, that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went up to his father Isaac, who felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. He said, Are you really my son Esau? He answered, I am. Then he said, Bring it to me, that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine, that people serve you and the nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be everyone who blesses you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our Old Testament song tonight is entitled The City of God and comes from the 26th chapter of Isaiah. We have a strong city with walls and ramparts built for our safety. Open the gates and let a righteous nation enter, a nation that keeps faith. Lord, you keep those of firm purpose untroubled because of their trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for he is an eternal rock. The path of the righteous is smooth, and you, Lord, make level the way for the upright. We have had regard to the path prescribed in your laws, 
Your name and your renown are your heart's desire. With all my heart and song for you, in the night I at dawn I seek for you. For when your laws prevail on earth, the inhabitants of the world learn what justice is. Lord, you will bestow prosperity upon us, for in truth all our works are your doing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Then our New Testament reading comes from Paul's letter to the Roman church as well as to us. We're reading the first eight verses of the 12th chapter. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy and or proportion to faith, ministry in ministry, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. And then our New Testament song, a song of faith and hope, comes from the letter to the Romans, selected verses of the fifth chapter. Now that we have been justified through faith, we are at peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to that grace in which we now live. And we exalt in the hope of the divine glory that is to be ours. More than this, we even exalt in our present sufferings because we know that suffering is a source of endurance. Such hope is no fantasy. Through the Holy Spirit he has given us, God's love has flooded our hearts. It was while we were still helpless that at the appointed time Christ died for the wicked. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that is God's proof of his love toward us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I am a middle child. I have an older brother, four years older than me, a sister two years older than me, and then a younger brother, six years younger, and my last brother is nine years younger than I am. So when I went to school, and you would go to school, and on the first day of class, the teacher would read the names out. And as they came to my name, invariably, I would be asked the question, are you Mike's? Are you Barbara's brother? Yes, I am. Yes, I know how smart they are. Yes, I know how good they are. Then, after I went to college and came back home, I would meet people and they would say, oh, are you Steve's brother? Are you James' brother? For a number of years, I felt like I was only known not for myself, but for being someone else's brother. Created a lot of sibling rivalry, I have to say. Constantly being compared to the other four in the family rather than for who I was or what I had to offer, what my gifts might be. And I think that's why the stories in the book of Genesis resonate with me so much. Uh, The stories of sibling rivalry, from the very beginning of the book with Cain and Abel to the very end of the book with Joseph and confronting his brothers who had sold him into slavery, who had 
washed their hands of him and went back home and told that their father that he had been killed. The book of Genesis is about, is about sibling rivalry. It's about that human condi condition that we all, most of us, unless we're a single child, live with, competing with brothers and sisters, competing with other members of our family, seeing some favored more than others, perhaps, or at least feeling that way. Years ago, an American author named John Steinbeck took the story of Cain and Abel and wrote a marvelous book called East of Eden. The book of Genesis, this about these dysfunctional families, about these sibling rivalries has been a gold mine for writers of plays and movies, of books, of poems, of sermons, of TV shows taking these ordinary people who sometimes just can't seem to get along with one another and whose rivalry seems to get them into more trouble. So how do we learn to deal with that? How do we learn to put these rivalries behind us? How do we learn to try to set aside those animosities? Fortunately, over the years with my siblings, with my brothers and my sister, we're really good friends now. We look after one another. And I know that if I was in a serious situation, they would come to help me as I would go to help them if they found themselves in trouble. Too often we like to cling to those rivalries, cling to those sibling disputes, to hold those grudges in the back of our minds, if not within our hearts. But Paul, in his writing to the Romans offered them and offers us a different way to not let ourselves be conformed, not let ourselves be shaped, not let ourselves be guided by these rivalries, these competitions, not just in our own families, but in our churches, in our politics, in our communities, in our world. Not to let ourselves continue to be shaped by those ancient rivalries, those long-held memories of how so-and-so was liked better than me, but simply be transformed, be transformed by the grace of God, be transformed by the renewing of your minds, he says, be transformed in the renewing of your heart, be transformed in the renewing of your soul. This ancient story of Esau and Jacob continues to be replayed in family after family, in year after year, in situation after situation. And then we have to decide whether or not we're going to let those situ things, those memories guide us, or are we going to be transformed by the grace and love and hope of our God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite you now to join with me <clears throat> in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Lord our God, at the ending of this day and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness that we may take our rest in peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable kingdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. To you be glory and praise forever. For you have given us a share of the inheritance of the saints in the light. In the darkness of the passing age, your saints proclaim the glory of your kingdom. Chosen as lights in the world, they surround our steps as we journey on towards that eternal city of light. <clears throat> where they sing the triumphal song. Open our eyes to behold your glory and free our tongues to join our song with theirs. We give you thanks this night, O oh God, for all those who have been lights in our lives, 
all those who continue to care for us, to watch over us, to comfort us, to reach out and simply ask how we are doing, to continue to, who continue to share their love and mercy with us. And in the silence of these moments, let us each offer up our prayers of thanksgiving to our God. For great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the ages. To you be praise and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing to your church, holiness, to the world, peace, to this nation, to the nations in which we live, justice, and to all people, knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the sick, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. <clears throat> we pray especially this night for the ministers and elders and members of the churches in Lincolnshire, as well as our own individual communities of faith wherever we live, and for all those who support us and encourage us. We pray for those who continue to face the challenge of uh, COVID-19, all those weary key workers, the NHS, care home staff, teachers, students, uh, staff, people who continue to work on vaccines to deal with the different variants for those who continue to try to recover from the Omicron variant. And now there's a new sub variant that seems to be sweeping uh, the world. We pray for all those who continue to try to tweak the vaccination so that they might be used as boosters for those in need and for those who continue to try to give the first jabs to those who need it so much. We pray for those who continue to be affected by the typhoon in the Philippines and the tsunami in Tonga. We pray for the unsettled situation in Ukraine and pray that cool heads and wise hearts might be able to come to some solution that would avoid violence and fears. We pray for those who face rising costs in food, housing, heat, and so many other essentials in these days. We pray with Allison for her daughter-in-law, Shannon, as she approaches the time to give birth. <clears throat> we pray with Liz for her 12-year-old great-nephew, Ryan, and for her daughter, Emma, as she continues to uh, go through her chemotherapy and also look after her five-year-old son, Leon. We pray with Prince for Cheryl, for Cheryl's hope and strength and healing. We pray for Prince as he cares for her and also as they worry about the people in their nation and so many other nations who cannot get the health care, uh, the resources, the vaccines we can. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, for Liz and Ruth and their ongoing care of Mike. We pray with Judith for her niece, Catherine. We pray for the Reverend Ruth Dillon, who's recovering from her surgery and going through uh, chemotherapy treatments. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. <clears throat> we pray for all those who grieve the passing of loved ones, especially those who have died because of COVID. We pray for those at the Lowborough United Reformed Church, as well as the members of her families on the death of Reverend Margaret Taylor. And in the silence of these moments, God, we would lift up those prayers of a need and concern <clears throat> that we carry in our hearts. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> now I invite you in your own language, tradition, format to join me in the prayer Jesus taught. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
We certainly do continue to pray for Alfie and his family as they wait uh, for the surgery to be able to take place. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Good night, friends. Sleep well. <laughs>